to biography. Yeah, well, I, I moved out into the woods back when I was 17 or 18, back in uh, 1976. And, uh, and I, I moved in between uh, Eagle and Circle uh, along the Yukon River. And there was a group of people that were living out there, mushing dogs and hunting and trapping and fishing. And, and um, it was, a, when I went out, I went with, uh, there were a couple of other guys that were living on the Candic River too. And so there were, there were three of us basically that were really living a really rudimentary life, you know, and we had, uh, one guy had one dog and then I had two dogs. And uh, then uh, the buddy of mine and, uh, that I went out there with, he, he had two dogs. So there were five dogs between three of us. So not a lot of pulling um, uh, power in it. And uh, so we, we built these uh, pretty rudimentary sleds. So we, we knew from talking with some uh, elders up in the village of Eagle that... Um, that in the old days, the, uh, the native folks up there, the Athabascans there, were um, traveling around with toboggans, flat bottom toboggans, wooden toboggans. And um, we didn't have, we, none of us had chainsaws. We had bow saws and axes. And there were a number of old cabins up there. And they were, they had been occupied last back, uh, right before the Second World War. And so all these old cabins, they had these steel saws, steel rip saws and steel crosscut saws. So we would cut boards, we would cut birch boards. Birch is, is definitely our best approximation of a hardwood mm -hmm. that we have in, in Alaska, well, in, in the interior of Alaska anyway. Um, and it bends. Spruce, you could do it out of spruce. Uh, it might be a little lighter, but um, it, spruce doesn't bend worth a hoot. Hmm. So we would cut boards and uh, we made toboggans. We started back then and, and initially my first one was about uh, 13 inches wide because I had two dogs, you know, it's like I'm not going to build a really huge thing, but I just needed something to be able to haul meat in or haul my camp gear when I would go traveling in the winter because I would snowshoe and they would just pull it behind me. And I had a, uh, I had an upright system on there too, you know, you have a cross piece and you notch these uprights into it. Now the uprights on uh, the, the uh, toboggan that, that you and I uh, put together, um, the uprights and the cross pieces on them are these uh, uh, burned black spruce. And black spruce is definitely more dense and uh, a stronger wood per diameter than uh, white spruce. And uh, though that's a, it's going to be a, it's a stout um, component for that. So the first one, like I said, of mine was about 13 inches wide and, and about eight feet long with about, uh, I don't know, 15 inches for me to stand on. So it was really your functional load was only about five feet or four feet uh, of that, you know, because there's a curl up on the end and what you stand on. And, and in any one of these rigs, you know, the, the dog sleds or toboggans, you want it, your weight in the back as much as possible. You know, like 80 or 90% of the weight behind the halfway mark. But, um, but anyway, those were, they, they worked great. We could go up, um, I, in the upper Candic River where, where I was living, we would get these wintering bands of caribou come in. And so, you know, you couldn't ever depend on getting a caribou in a particular place. You took them wherever you ran into them, you know, because they were pretty wary, but it might be up a hill. It might be, there was a pingo that was up there, one of these uh, places that has a, it's kind of a little hill forced up by, by you know, hundreds of years of the spring coming up and freezing and moving the dirt up and everything. And the caribou loved it. They loved the the spring water, they would gather at it. And so it was a dependable place. But it was up this gnarly little stream, but I could snowshoe up there, pick up caribou meat, and then walk it back. And the dogs would haul back a whole caribou at a time, two dogs in this toboggan. And in the early days, the toboggans were straight wood. You know, it was just birch. And uh, they, would, uh, they, they would drag it fine. As it got warmer, you know, up towards freezing, it didn't drag very, very well, and it was a, there was a lot of friction, 
And the old timer said, you know, well, we put pine tar on it. Well, we tried that. It still doesn't really make it great. But, but they would pull it. And, um, and it wasn't for quite a few years when we would get more dogs, you know, because the biggest team that I had out there was about six dogs or so, six functional dogs. They had a couple of retired dogs too, but, um, but, but at that time we started being able to get this uh, UHMW plastic, you know, the, the white sled plastic, and we'd get a 10-foot sheet. And so my later toboggans were, you know, 16 inches wide or thereabouts, and, uh, and, and 10 feet long with a big curl at the front end. Got a little more sophisticated in how to bend them and construct them and brought a little more tools and things like that out there. But uh, uh, they were a great rig and uh, I still think that they're, they're one of the best all around rigs you can have for being out in the woods. From a remote trapper perspective, which is where we fit in up there, um, they were the ideal rig. You know, when you look at efficiencies in pulling, whether you have two runners, so the idea behind two runners, you know, say four inches on the ground rather than, you know, 17 or 16 inches on the ground, is, is uh, that you have less surface area touching and so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more efficient. And I think it is. On a really good trail that's wide enough, a, a, a sled that is riding on runners whether it's a toboggan sled or a basket sled, uh, is more efficient. Um, it's easier for the dogs to pull. But every other condition you face, it's either as good or better. So the lashings. In the, in the, uh, in the old days, they would, uh, before the nylon cord, mm -hmm. they would do it out at Babiche. Mm -hmm you know, when it, it doesn't have stretch to it. Mm. And uh, I used to get bonded Saint twine because it doesn't have much stretch to it. It still has more stretch than, than Babiche mm. does. Uh, but Babiche, if you put a few rounds through, one, you've got to make bigger holes that you put it through. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you lash. And when it dries, it's, it's hard. It is not stretchy mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And so those sleds are uh, a bit more rigid. Mm -hmm you know, rather than squeaky and, you know, you can feel it move just slightly when you tip it. Uh, those would be, uh, it would be much more a unified uh, construction. Hmm. One of the problems is that when you put that toboggan or sled upside down out of the rain for the next summer, there's going to be some small animal that's going to come and chew them away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you leave them out in the rain, they're going to get wet and rot away. You know, so you might have to redo them pretty regular. So that's one of the, one of the challenges with uh, Babish. And so there were a variety of options, but I would get the uh, kind of thinner lashings so that I could make a bunch of turns mm -hmm. rather than the thicker so you make fewer, just because you could get the thinner ones tighter because you had multiple lashings. You would tighten and hold and make another loop, tighten and hold, make another loop, tighten and hold. And then you would do the, the lashings to pull them together um, and you get a little bit more. But you want, the, the way those are cross-lashed, you want there to be flexibility because you can't have, um, you know, the tensions like on a sled or, or on the toboggan, the upright, you know, where you're going to be tipping it up on its edge if you're riding. Like, so the Yukon freezes flat at some point, you know, in, in, in freeze up, it kind of raises, the water level raises, mm -hmm. freezes, and then it'll drop. So you get these shelves on the side that are slanted. And, and so um, a lot of times you might be standing on the edge of the tobog and tipping it just slightly so that you can run it right along that, that sloped edge. Mm -hmm. um, or, or you might have a side hill along a, a, a big, you know, the edge of a mountain you know, and you can tip it when you're creating your trail and make a trail mm -hmm. that is make tipped a little trail. bit. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be pulling on those things. But what you want is this cross lashing so that the, all the tension of, you know, you pulling that thing to the side, you know, uh, is being supported by the lashings rather than, you know, a, a, a little tenon mm -hmm. of the wood. Because the, you know, the birch, is not a true hardwood, but a true hardwood even would would, would not be able to withstand that uh, kind of a mm -hmm. that kind of torque. torque. 
if the pressure is on the wood. So, from the lead dog all the way back, there were two lines going, and they would go from from the lead dog's harness to the next dog and toggle in. That dog had a harness with two traces coming out back to the next dog, all the way to the wheel dog. And the wheel dog with those um, with those toboggans would have the shabs uh, that were just lashed on to the harness and the, and the tips of the shabs, which are those uh, sticks that they're kind of loosely tied to the, to the toboggan, just off the side of the, of the, uh, the up, of the upturn and so they just bounced against it as you went along and, and they weren't tight they could go you know if they you went down off a bank they could move if you went up off a bank they could move and uh, and then they they stuck out just a little in front of the uh, of the shoulders of the wheel dog so the wheel dog then if there was a tree you know if you had a turn and there was a tree in the in the edge of the turn the wheel dogs got to know that they can't cut that corner because either the shab is going to stick on the tree, and it and it kind of it's an awkward thing for them, or or they're going to get whacked by it, you know, if they if they ignore it too much, you know, it'll it'll kind of hit them in the side, and so they they learn real fast that what they got to do is is pull off, so they're pulling out to get that shab by, and then the toboggan follow right along, so they can run through a thick willow patch without ever getting stuck and uh, with the with the shafts but the but the lines then coming off of the dog so you got your shafts they're not taking any of the pull they will take some of the some of the uh, back pressure like if they're going down a hill rather than run over the dog the wheel dog that the wheel dog will will be able to contain some of the uh, some of the force from a downhill so that it doesn't run into them. If it's a real steep downhill and the dogs, you know, are having trouble, it, it might jackknife. But that's just, you know, one of the. It better to have it go off in the in the trees or something than hit the dog. Mm -hmm. um, and then you then you just have to deal with it. But that's just, you know, one of the the nature of dog mushing. You know. Hi. Come on, let's go. Let's go. I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Bite each other and run at the same time. Come on. Multitasking. What's this? What's this? You ready for real excitement? You ready for real excitement? Okay, let's make some mistakes. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Doggies. Ah, over. There you go. Good dog. Good dog. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Good dogs. That was great. Stay good doggies. Stay good dogs. That was super. That was so good. Stay good dogs. Stay good dogs. God, you're so good. Stay. Stay good dogs. Stay. 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 Okay, come on by. Let's go. Go ahead and on by, on by, on by, on by. Good doggies. Good dogs, let's go. Okay.
He's getting used to you. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs>